A federal lawsuit has been filed against a sheriff in Tennessee. His name is Audie Shoup of White County, Tennessee. And this federal lawsuit has been filed by a widow, a woman who lost her husband in a shooting that Sheriff Shoup was very supportive of. Now the man who lost his life was Michael Dial and he was in a low speed pursuit involving a cops who wanted to pull him over because of a suspended license. Now he was driving an incredibly old truck, a 40 year old truck. And as a result, he wasn't going very fast, he couldn't go very fast. And cops wanted to essentially ram him off the road by kind of nudging him with one of the police cruisers. When the sheriff found out that they were attempting to utilize that tactic, he wasn't very happy about it. He didn't want to damage one of his police cruisers. So he advised the cops to essentially shoot this guy, and they did. They shot at his vehicle, and Michael Dial lost his life as a result. When a deputy had successfully nudged Dial off the road, Reserve Deputy Adam West, who was in pursuit in his own personal vehicle, fired three shots as the vehicle went down into a ditch. Dial died of a gunshot wound to the head. All right, so with that said, we have some evidence of what the sheriff had said. He didn't realize that his commentary was being picked up by another cop's body cam. Before we get to what he was saying on the scene, let's take a look at the first video that shows what the scene of the chase looked like. Take a look. 's had successfully nudged him off the road his car was already in a ditch and at that point one of the cops exits his vehicle and immediately starts shooting no questions asked keep in mind this was over a suspended license this wasn't and it was during a very slow pursuit 40 to 50 miles per hour max because his vehicle was so old really you think that someone should lose their life over a suspended license I mean come okay so there's that part of the story. We have more damning evidence against the sheriff in just a moment, but I want to open it up to the panel. Well, I was just going to make one point, and I think it's an important thing that you that you hint at here, which is that oftentimes when cops address the issue of using deadly force, it's if this person in this case that they're pursuing is a threat to the community. I mean, if it were like a heavily populated area and they're driving recklessly and very fast, and I mean, it would still be something that they would likely be quite hesitant to do, but at least then they could wrap their head around the logic of using deadly force. But as Anna says, slow speed chase, rural road, he's already off the road, it amounts to an execution. And he doesn't represent any threat to the community. And keep in mind, I mean, the sheriff ordered the cops to take him out by any means necessary. And what you're about to hear is even worse because the sheriff apparently thinks, hey, you know what? This is the right thing to do. This is the kind of stuff I live for, okay? Let's take a look at the next video. The cop, by the way, is distraught after this shooting occurred. And the sheriff basically tries to calm him down, pay close attention to what he says. Hey, Adam, you're, you're good. You call your wife, tell them you're all right. You don't have to worry about this. I made the decision. You don't have to worry about it. I took that away from y'all. You don't have to worry about nothing. Everything's cool. You done just exactly right. Hey, 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 Carl. You done the right thing. I told you that. I love it. I told you you done the right thing. I tell you. I'm glad. Hey, you done the right thing. You kept somebody from getting killed. This fool was crazy. Call your wife. Her. Everything good. 
I've, I made that decision. You don't have to worry about nothing. You got your phone with you? Are you? You don't have to be scared, brother. I know it's natural, but you don't have to. Natural. Hang in there. You tough? I know you didn't want to do it. Hey, that's all right. Hey, we're good. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of that. And, uh, I ain't worried about this at all. Of course, you're not worried about this at all. I mean, we've already wow. set a precedent in this country where an unarmed person can get shot for something as minor as driving without a suspended or driving with a suspended license. And you know, the community will back you guys up. Politicians will back you guys up. We've set that standard, and it's sad to know that people can easily lose their lives over something like this. I mean, so many thoughts around this. One, of course, that. This is a situation of aggressive, aggressive force that was uncalled for. And there's even additional tape um, that was picked up by the body cam where the sheriff actually says, I thrive on this. We have that for you. Um, you know, I, I apologize for interrupting you, but I want to have the audience listen to that and then I want you to continue. Okay. Take a look. I told him, I said, take him out. I heard. Uh, Damn, I don't give a shit. It wasn't long after that. I heard shots fired, shots fired. I said, we're ramming. I said, don't, don't ram him, shoot him. Fuck that shit. I ain't gonna turn my cars up. But I got two cars tore up again. I know. Yeah, well, right now, uh, we don't know if Charlie shot him or if Adam, but it looks like Adam shot him. But Adam took it hard. I, I, hey, I, he talks that big shit. Now he's in the big league. You know, if he can't take it, he needs to get out. I'll tell you something, God. If they don't think I'll give a damn water to kill that motherfucker, they pull shit. Take him out. I'm, I'm, I'm here on the damn end, wrong end of the damn county out here. Use deadly force. Shit. I love this shit, God. I, I tell you what, I thrive on it. I love this. I thrive off of it. I, yeah, yeah. And if you can't take this, you're in the big leagues now. This is not even a part of your job description. This man was unarmed. He did not pose a threat, a very active, explicit threat. And we, we, always end up dismissing this because we think and we are told the propaganda the law enforcement is a very deadly job, right? Yep. They don't even make the top 10 in terms of the most deadly jobs. I believe bartender is up in the top 10. So really? yeah, so that should give you an understanding of the context of actually how how much they are overarmed, overprotected by the law and by the weapons that they carry. And the other thing which was so interesting was that he kept on using the phrase by any means necessary, by any means necessary, right? And it's interesting because somebody who was very famous for that line, Malcolm X, who meant freedom, justice, and equality will get to it by any means necessary was vilified for allegedly advocating violence. And this man is actually advocating violence by any means necessary. He loves it, he loves it. It didn't matter what the offense was here. It didn't matter whether or not that person posed a threat. He very openly admitted without realizing that that body cam was picking up his audio that he loves Taking these people out, you know, it doesn't matter if it's over a suspended license. He literally said that he didn't like the fact that they were trying to ram uh, the cops were trying to ram him with the police cruiser because he didn't want to ruin one of his cop cars. Yeah, and this is a chase that for the most part was 30 to 40 miles an hour, just to give you some sense of it. I mean, we're used to seeing these high octane chases where people are going 100, 110 miles an hour, and you can say, well, you know, your adrenaline's going and, you know, stuff happens. This is a 30 to 40 mile an hour police chase. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, and to Anna's point, guess what the deputy attorney's investigation found? No He's cleared. Doing. Yeah, no wrongdoing. So there you go. They they know they can get away with it. And this sheriff, uh, he was a sheriff, right? I believe. Yes, he yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Sir. the sheriff in Tennessee. Uh, he knows that likely his officers can get away with it. I mean, how disturbing was it? How unnerved he was, and to try to like paternalistically calm somebody down who shot somebody that didn't deserve to be killed, no, to be executed, as Mark was saying. Even worse, you know, to later criticize the cop for being distraught over the fact yeah. that he just shot and killed someone, basically telling him, if you can't handle this, then you need to get out of the force. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Yeah. You heard exactly what he said. I mean, look, there are. So many issues at play. Yes, uh, there is the problem of poor police training. But when we mention the poor police training, I feel like oftentimes we're being 
overly fair or overly generous. There are significant bad apples within the police force, that sheriff being one of the primary examples. He is not a result of bad training, he is a bad actor. There, He has no business being a cop. So, you know, we'll see how this plays out. Again, there's a federal lawsuit and, and hopefully the widow in this case gets some form of justice, you know, after the cops took her husband away over a suspended license. But the worst part about these stories is how society reacts to them. And I just want everyone to just take a moment to put themselves in that woman's shoes and understand what it feels like to lose a loved one over a suspended license. If you become a member of the Young Turks, you'll be saying, you know, I'm like a smart person. So do it right now, tytnetwork.com slash join, get the whole Young Turks show every day.